Bonjour. Hello, it's me, Rose, and today we're going to talk about my clothes and all the cool stuff that's in my closet. I'm sure that you guys have noticed that I have so many flowy white blouses that I don't know what to do with. I'm telling you there's like an entire part of my closet that's flowy white blouses, but we're not talking about the flowy white blouses in my closet today. We are talking about all the other cool stuff in my closet. Today, we are drinking a Lapsang. And we're using my Nishiki tea set, which isn't really called a Nishiki tea set. I just call it the Nishiki tea set because I'm Yakuza trash. And uh, our lovely tea pet today is Kiyu. Our lovely little dragon boy. I will give you a close up of him when I pour tea over him. My kettle already heated itself up and <laughs> I blew the fuse in this room and I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> So I have to like go into the other room to get the kettle and I already got the kettle so I'm gonna make the tea before the water starts to cool and everything. I really should buy a proper presentation plate and not use regular porcelain plates from Daiso. I have a list over here things in order so it makes editing easier. I have been a patron of the alternative fashion arts for um... As long as I can remember, I think it maybe started when I was 13, I want to say. I think my real journey with alternative fashion started when it was like the mid to early 2000s. People were getting to Lolita, and so was I. But I was looking on all the wrong sites, like Milanu and all those like weird shady places where you get Lolita um, that aren't real Lolita brands because I wasn't educated, but luckily I didn't get anything from those places because I had a friend who showed me that I uh, can buy things from actual brands and this is like how you actually get things. So a majority of the things I'm going to be showing you today are from like Lolita brands and um, Japanese brands in general in the Lolita realm. First, we need to have a tea pet cam so I can pour tea all over Kiyu. Tea pet cam. Chug, 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 chug. Yeah. Oh, he's so cute. I'm going to paint him with more tea. I love him. So. Now that that's over with. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do it. And the reason I have all this stuff is not just because I was really interested in Lolita. I was a performer for years and years and years. I still am a performer. I have a degree in vocal performance, which I say in like every video. <laughs> but anyway, I spent years in high school on stages and using all of these clothes for stage clothes. And yeah, so I have a lot of stuff because I, I needed it. Let's get right into the specific items. I'm going to be talking a lot of garment construction things with this because that's how nerdy I am. What is the first thing we're talking about? Ah, the jellyfish dress. So the jellyfish dress was a dress that, oh my god, this dress is so gorgeous because the custom fabric on it is absolutely unreal if you look at the pattern on the bottom it is unique like on on the whole thing it's not just like a repeated pattern it's like a huge painting on the bottom of this dress oh it just makes me so happy but I bought this dress the night of my sweet 16 because I went to bed and I was like now people gave me money <laughs> So I can spend it on the internet on Lolita dresses. I bought this dress the night of my sweet 16 because in reality I wanted that to be my sweet 16 dress. My sweet 16 dress was a Baby the Starshine Bright. It was the Baby the Starshine Bright Old Rose JSK. I'll probably talk about that in another video because I'm planning to do a part two of this. I don't really think I could cover all the cool stuff in my wardrobe with just a part one video. Um, I... I, I Guys, I have so much stuff. I'm gonna pour the tea now into the Nishikis now. Promise you guys I can sing. 
I wanted that dress for my Sweet 16 dress, but I was like, oh, my mom's not going to think it's like appropriate for a Sweet 16 dress. And she didn't. She, she was like, you want that for a Sweet 16 dress? Don't you want to go a little bit more over the top? But in my opinion, this dress is pretty over the top with that beautiful fabric. And I think by the time they released it um, and like had the pre-order period and everything, um, I was looking for, it, it was like before I was looking for a Sweet 16 dress, so I missed my window of opportunity, but then they had leftovers. And I'm like, leftovers? So I bought one immediately. The next thing we're going to talk about is my hummingbird vest, and this is something I made. I made this out of a pattern. It's an unlined vest, and I used some upholstery fabric, and it's pretty cute. I hand beaded the whole thing. That hummingbird, I just kind of made from memory. I was like, hmm, what am I going to put here? And it turned into a hummingbird. So that's why the hummingbird might look a little bit discombobulated, but that's just because, I don't know, I think it's cheeky. I have found these beautiful pants that go with it. I went to Anime NYC in 2017 and found these beautiful pants that look like they were made for it. And so I have a complete outfit there. I have actually never worn it anywhere in particular. Maybe I will wear it on camera. Oh, the next one is actually my prom dress. It's the Baby the Starshine Bright Sleeping Beauty OP. And I remember when I went to prom, so here's the thing, I went to prom not because I like wanted to go to prom. I mean, I had like friends in school, but by that time it's senior year, you hate all of your friends and they hate you. And so I went to prom so I could look better than everyone else and show all of my bullies that I was cuter than them. And you know what? <laughs> it worked. It worked, honey. Because this dress is absolutely gorgeous. I went to Baby the Starshine Bright in New York City to buy this. And actually there was a photographer. So I went to my boyfriend's prom. Uh, you can skip to this timestamp if you don't want to hear this story, but this is a lovely revenge story. Uh, so if you guys don't know this, I actually got bullied out of my school district when I was in middle school. I got bullied so badly that on my first day of public high school, I had to move schools. My boyfriend, who is still my boyfriend, I don't know if we were dating at the time. No, this was right before we started dating. My boyfriend still went to the last school that I was at. And so when it came time for me to go to prom, I had to go to my prom and I also had to go to his prom. So when I went to his prom, uh, I got to see all of the people that bullied me eat their hearts out because I am the most gorgeous woman on the planet. Is this like... Mm. I didn't burn my face off, but I probably shouldn't be having this because I'm already off the shits right now. I don't need to be more off the shits in Lapsang. It, it does things to me when it comes to the tea and caffeine department. Mm. Anyway, so there was this girl, she would close my fingers into the piano during choir practice. She actually, she got detention on the last day of school because she went through my bag and broke a bunch of my stuff. That's another story. But anyway, she was a bitch and I walked in with my baby the starshine bright dress and the photographer at the prom was like, oh my God, you are gorgeous, let me take pictures of you. And so me and this photographer just had this mini photo shoot. He was probably some kind of creep, but you know what? At that point, I didn't care because I was being a ham and I was feeling myself. And so this girl who bullied me, I hadn't seen her in four years at that point. And in she comes with her boyfriend who also bullied me in middle school. I was like probably one of the most hated kids in that school. I don't know why, it was probably because I was annoying. She comes in with her boyfriend and they're like, can we get a picture taken? And the photographer is like, yeah, just give me a second. And she's like, no, can we like, please just get our picture taken? You've been taking pictures of her for like five minutes straight. And he's like, but do you see how gorgeous she is? And I'm just there like. I actually didn't realize it was her until um, Nolan came to like pull me away from the photographer and he looked at her and went eat shit Sheila this story sounds so fake especially with the level of conceit that I embody 
Like, that definitely seems like something I would make up to gas myself up. My vengeance against her is, um, the last day of school detention thing and double whammy I'll always be cuter than her and she'll always remember it or maybe she won't maybe I don't take up that much space in her head but that's okay I take up a lot of space in my head <laughs> okay um the next thing we're talking about is my 24 hour Cinderella cosplay that I handmade myself we're going right into the Majimas today kids that cosplay took a very long time with a lot of work, I drafted the pattern myself, and it fits like a dream. But the shoulder pads are kind of funny because I, I fully lined the whole thing, but the shoulder pads are not inside the lining. They are outside, and they rest right on my shoulders because I had to adjust them. I got shoulder pads, but the shoulder pads I got were just not big enough. You need, pow, 80 shoulder pads with that thing. But. Whatever. You guys don't care about garment construction right now. All you care about is sparkly suit with stars all over it. What is happening over there? It was the dishwasher! Anyway, sparkly suit with heat transfer stars on it was a bitch to make because it's spandex. My insert coin Majima jacket, beautiful embroidery. I think every single Yakuza fan should have one of these jackets for their favorite characters and they're coming out with new ones. I remember looking at this for the first time and I was like, they're not that cool. And then my mom looked at it and she's like, what are you kidding me? I'm getting you one for Christmas. And so she got me one for Christmas and I wear it all the time. I wear it all the time. It doesn't look like I wear it all the time because I come on camera and I'm just like, Welcome to my cafe where I wear bows around my necks with tuxedo shirts. My BTSS beat my mm -mm, not BTSS beat Ellis and the Pirates celipet pants. These are really cool. They're a vest. They're pants. They make me look like a prince. I got them when I was 19 years old, I believe. But the coolest thing about these pants is that the pockets are like having a moat around you. So you have pockets in the front, but the pockets don't just like stop in the front and then you have pockets in the back. You have pockets in the front and then it goes around your hips to the back which makes it really easy to feel like you lost your phone because you'll be like, where's my phone? And then go in the front and then you'll be like, okay, it got stuck somewhere between my ass and the front of me. Anyway. So what's the next thing I want to talk about? My BTSSB Justina dress I got for my 17th birthday and when I got it, okay, I actually got this at the Baby the Starshine Bright store, which I miss in New York City. It's closed now. This, I got so excited when I was buying it that I almost threw up in the streets of New York City. And that's my story. This is a gorgeous dress. It's great for the winter. I love the construction of it. I love the fabric. It's so soft. If only I felt comfortable enough to wear dresses lately. I just haven't been a dress person lately, but I always think about this dress, always. Like the two dresses that I always think about are always this dress and the jellyfish dress when it comes to if I'm given the opportunity to wear a dress. My 16th century doublet. I handmade this. The outside of it is a flocked chiffon and then it is interlined with velvet, which you can also see on the bottom. And then the actual lining of it is a jacquard. I got all three of these fabrics at the New York Fabric District, you know. But let me tell you something. This thing fits like a glove. This thing is amazing. It makes me so like period accurate conical shaped. It's like wearing a pair of stays, fully boned uh, with zip ties that I got at the hardware store that's a block away from my college. And I made it on the floor of an asbestos riddled dorm room. And yeah, so that uh, is my beautiful 16th century doublet. It laces up the sides. It fits me so well. I actually wore it to Harajuku and I got a lot of heads turning into me because it's just a beautiful piece. It's just so good. Ooh, my ZJ Story frog coat that also comes with a vest. So it was like a whole set. I ordered this set, first of all, this is like 
probably the most beautiful set that I have. So this set I ordered on my 19th birthday when I was between houses and I was sick and I could not sleep and so I was sobbing that night. But uh, I ordered it the night of my birthday to make myself feel better and it was for my birthday um, and it's one of the most beautiful sets I've ever owned. Every time I wear it, I feel like, I don't know. It's like the most beautiful I can be when I wear that set. It came with a blouse and some other things too, but I just wanted to put the jacket and the vest in this video. What my friends affectionately call my black parade jacket. I got this in Harajuku at Jury Black. I wanted to get like one definitive item from Harajuku that I'm like, this is my beautiful fancy item that I got from Harajuku. And uh, I'm pretty sure that 70% of the reason that I bought this was because it's beautifully made, it's versatile, it's velvet, it's gorgeous, and I can wear it with so many things, it fits me well, and 30% of it was that the boy who was selling it to me was a beautiful Visual K masterpiece, and he didn't call me cute, he called me handsome. And if you call me handsome, then you are guaranteed to sell me something. Like this video and subscribe if you think I'm handsome. My vampire coat that I got for my birthday one year from my boyfriend. It's so interesting because it's not lined. It has Hong Kong seams in the back. And that is so cool because it's like a frock coat, but it's got Hong Kong seams instead of a line. I just, it, it's such, it's such an interesting effect. Nobody is excited about this but me, but I love this coat. It makes me look like I'm goth as hell. Anyway, that's all I'm gonna say. And, oh, the last thing is this isn't pressed. I just made this, this tailcoat. I just made this tailcoat. Oh my God, it's gonna be so cute when it's done. But I had to top stitch the edges because the lining kept poking out. This is my first ever tailcoat that I'm making. I'm making this weird style transition from just like purely historical inspired clothes and um, Lolita and OG to get some Takarazuka in there. And <laughs> so that's why I've been just pumping out the tailcoats and that was the first one that I had made. Okay, so that's it. Let me like chug the rest of this tea. If you like this video and you think I'm handsome, please subscribe and hit that like button because I deserve it. If you like how conceited I am, say something wonderful about yourself in the comments. Go off about yourself. I want to hear it. I want people to feel as good about themselves as I do when I am just going off. Going off in the middle of quarantine when my mental health is in shambles and I'm sitting here drinking tea that I shouldn't be drinking and the caffeine high has already kicked in. So, you go do that. Write something nice about yourself in the comments. Um, recommend me some nice tea if you have some tea that you like and you want me to make in this video. And maybe give me some more video ideas because honestly, I'm running out. Like, how many more things can I do while I sit and make tea? How many things can I run my mouth about? Give me some ideas. Goodbye. <laughs>